Talking with Topher is sponsored by slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and naturalbossnh.com. More on that later. Let's get into episode 98. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back. Woo! I have got an awesome, awesome podcast set up for everybody out there. Uh, But before I get into any of that, uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who already subscribes to the podcast. You're what keeps me coming back here week after week. Um, I saw some more subscribers, so that just, uh, well, I just love it, and I appreciate it, and I just need to say thank you to all of you out there for doing that. Remember to subscribe. That's right. You watching, listening, you need to be subscribing. Click, smash, lick that subscribe button. Uh, It's the only thing I'm asking you to do. It's the most important thing. It means everything to me, and almost nothing to you. So go ahead and click that. If you want to do more, uh, of course, give a thumbs up for the video, share, rate, review, and leave comments in the comment section. That's right. That all helps the algorithm of the podcast. Uh, It helps it grow, and I need your help to do that. Uh, If you want to get more involved with the podcast, you have a story, maybe there's a story you know that needs to be heard, send it over to T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. Put slow down in the subject line and you get the opportunity to win some free slow down merch. All right. So if I pull your story, we have a Zoom, whatever happens, you're going to get some free merch. And I'm excited to share that opportunity with you. Just send the email over to T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. Um, and then if you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. That's right. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. And now with all of that out of the way, I want to get into today's episode. Uh, so I had a, well, a colleague, a friend. I had a blast from the past come in on Sunday Um, which today is Monday. It's the 14th. But yeah, we did it yesterday. We sat down. Um, It was an amazing podcast. Uh, I did not know that uh, having some guests on, um, maybe I did know, but it it just hit me yesterday, where it's an amazing experience to get to know somebody. And being uh, or having this um, capability Um, is now opening my eyes to getting to know people that I thought I knew um, in a different light. So this has been uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, Another goal I was trying to reach was having a guest once a month. So far, so good. Uh, this, This is a lot of fun to have Kevin Freeman on and talk about just his life, getting to know him. And uh, he makes music and... You can uh, follow him on uh, all the social media. Everything will be posted in the uh, description below. Um, and I just wanted to share this with all of you. It was it was a great time. We had a lot of fun. And um, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited that I do not want to waste any more of your time. So enjoy today's podcast, Talking with Kevin Freeman. All right. Well, it is uh, February 13th, 2022, and I am here with Kevin Freeman, uh, my guest today. And um, why don't you plug uh, anything you want? All right. Well, let's see. I want to you know, plug some of my music. Some of you, I, I, you know, I've been doing my music for quite some time, you know, a couple of years. Took some time off, and then I got back into it. So my music, if you want to listen to it, it's basically I'm on Spotify, I'm on SoundCloud, I'm on Apple Music, I'm basically everywhere. And you know my to, to listen to my music, my artist name is Kevin. Okay, and then it's Freeman seventy three. So basically, go on to any of those venues, 
and you shall see, you know, you'll get to hear my music. It's a little bit of everything, okay? It's not all hip-hop. It's R&B. You know, it's rap. It's even a little reggae. I even got into, you know, a little country because, you know, I got I got to keep it country, you know. So I'm kind of spread out everywhere. And people go, what's your style? And I go, it's just basically Wild Child. Wild Child is basically whatever the mood gets you to, however you feel. If, if, the, if you feel a vibe and you feel a good flow with it, you flow with it. So that's kind of what my style is. I'm, I'm scattered everywhere. So, if, you know, check me out on those venues. I'm, I'm, I'm killing it. I'm actually coming out with some new music as well. So nice. I'm working on a couple, you know, a couple songs. I've got at least 10 songs I'm working on. Um, right now, I got over 100 songs basically on those venues alone. Oh, so, great. Oh, yeah. Great. We'll get more into that for sure. Oh, yeah. oh that's amazing, dude. I got to stay busy. Um, I'll, I'll put, uh, all the little notes and stuff at the bottom of the screen. We'll plug all that in during editing, editing magic. I like to call it, (laughs) but, um, so let's, let's get started, man. Like where, uh, you know, we work together. That's how we know each other. So we can establish some, uh, what is that groundwork or something? But we used to work together at Walmart and it was Amherst and I've been trying to, re re go through like go through my index there and i think wasn't it back in 2008 2009 let's see i've been with uh the merrimack district for over it's nine years now right and, and right I, you know I, yeah so it's around that, that time frame yeah. around that time frame yeah. yeah yeah so tell me where where did uh like where did you grow up where were you born where you guys are gonna you know I'm originally from Dorchester, Mass. Oh, okay. You know, you know that the saying, you know, you know, Massachusetts people, we somehow seem to migrate up here. To oh, hell yeah. You know, it's just one of those things. But I was born and raised in Dorchester, Mass. Uh, my parents, my mother, she is originally from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So imagine going from Alabama to Boston, you know, to Massachusetts. So, um, you know, that's kind of how it was. I, you know, grew up in Dorchester, Mass, learned a lot. People tend to have a bad rep of the city. Um, yes. And I, you know, all I can say is the city made me or made me who I am today. The city, you know, prepared me for street smart. Cause there are some people out there in the world that are smart, you know, very intelligent, but they don't have what you call street smart or common sense. Okay. You know? Yeah. And that, and that, you know, growing up helped me understand that helped me, you know, figure all that out. And then when I got old enough, I said, you know what? I said, all right, I got my license. I said, I want to travel. You know, so I ended up moving further up and further up, you know, and I, uh, you know, went to, you know, drove up to New Hampshire. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, uh, I kind of like this country vibe. I was like, I kind of, I, you know, it's it's a change, change of scenery from, you know, the noise and everything like that. I said, this is kind of, you know, this is a relaxing stage. And, I, and Around what year was this when you were coming uh, up to New Hampshire and getting this feel for it? Uh, let's see. Uh, it was like, uh, you know, 90. 95 around there. 95. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was basically as soon as I got my license and, you know, and I was like, all right. And I got my first car, which was a Mercury Topaz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember those. <laughs> so it was just, you know, I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to start driving up here and hanging out. And then, you know, the clubs and all that. I'm like, okay, I, I you know, I kind of like this vibe. And I instantly fell in love with New Hampshire. Okay. Now, my- now, dur- sorry to cut you off, yeah. but now during this time, are you uh into music like you are oh, yeah. today so this oh, has always been a that, thing that you've been cooking music has always been within me because you know my, my dad i say it comes from him because when i you know i was young at it you know and staying with him his thing was he would always play music you know until like three o'clock in the morning which would tick our neighbors off obviously but you know he was always playing the old school you know the the motown stuff oh great all, stuff all, yeah so great you know stuff. that that was inbred in me i you know oh. that was yeah i couldn't that was something that i couldn't you know i wasn't trying to shake um and then as i got older i said okay i ended up actually joining a group oh really yeah i was i was right when i was in high school my my best best friend you know uh he he's like one day he said to me he says all right you know i got to i got to go somewhere to this place and me, I'm like, you know, wherever you got to go, I'm, you know, I'll go with you, man, because it's just, it's just he was my best friend and we looked out for each other. And then all of a sudden he, you know, took me over to this, to this place, the projects. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah, was, yeah. you know, um, the projects that you guys call up here are not the projects. The projects no. that we, the projects that I know are brick buildings that were tall and, and, you know, 
They were true projects. They were true projects. Yeah. Yes. You know, so when people set it up and they go, oh yeah, I go, no, you you have no no idea what the projects really are. Um, and so we he ended up taking me over there, and I thought, you know, I thought he was, you know, gonna go meet some girl or something like that, and I just wanted to make sure he was okay. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, he he, you know, we go up to the house, and he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm actually I'm joining a group. Oh, yeah. And the group basically what they did was we did a lot of a lot of uh, cover for New Edition. Oh, okay, yeah, it was a okay. A lot of cover for New Edition. So you know how it is with all you know. This is the New Edition before the you know before Johnny Gill. It was the New Edition with Bobby Brown. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was a new that that's kind of what we did. God. Oh yeah, yeah. That brings back some <laughs> memories, dude. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So that you know we ended up. I en- he ended up joining, and I'm like, all right, I'm like a. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm like, how do, and I asked him, I said, you know, and I said, Sean, I, and I said, Sean, how can I get down? And he goes, well, I'll talk to them and see what they think. And then next thing you know, I was in the group. That's you know, freaking I, dope. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was the, I was the, uh, the, the basically, you know, the fifth member of the one, you know, that they, they kind of weren't expecting me to, to really perform and do my thing. Um, because at the time I was like, all right, these, these people knew I only know my best friend. Okay. I don't, I don't right. know anyone else, so you can't, you know, I, I'm not trying to overstep my boundaries. Right. You know, and then everyone had kind of a, a style, like the lead singer, and this, this was a girl, she was a lead singer. So, oh, wow. yeah, Oh, yeah. Yeah, Shauna Santel, she's, you know, shout out. She was a <laughs> she was a lead singer. So she's like, basically, she was a Ralph Tresvant. You know, my, my best friend was like Michael Bivens. That, okay. That, yeah, so we each, you know, kind of favored someone within the group. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. okay. So took on took on a persona. Oh, there you go. There a persona go. of uh, one of the members of the group. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you know, um, and then and and this is all happening before yeah, you moved is, to yeah. New Hampshire. This is this is happening way way before I way even, way before I even just you know was like all right let's let's go further up north. Okay. You know, all so right. So when you're go- when you're coming up to New Hampshire, said around ninety five. What was what was the reason for coming up here? Because when I uh, when my parents moved us out of Lynn, Mass, yeah. and moved us to Derry, New Hampshire, okay. that was because, you know, the neighborhood in Lynn was getting bad. Mm-hmm. And then one week before we were trying to sell our house in Lynn, yeah. a drunk driver put his car through our front porch. Oh, Jesus. oh yeah, it was, it was, wow. dude, my dad chased that motherfucker <laughs> down, bro. Chased him down and dragged him back to the fucking car, the cops said. It was good. in the police report. Oh, good. Fucking Good. wild. That, yeah, that that wow, dude. <laughs> dude, dude. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was so close. Oh, snap. They just wow. Yeah, Not that was uh, around 89, 90. Holy yeah, right around there. So, so like uh what 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 brought you to New Hampshire? My my thing on, honestly, it was the girls. It was. Yeah, I wanted to. Change. But you were bringing yourself yeah. up here. I oh, was, yeah, okay. No, so was, it wasn't your parents moving no, you out. No, it was no. you. No, when I, you know, as soon as I, you know, I got my license and I, and I was like, all right, I can travel now. Because, yeah. You know, that's the thing about the city. People don't realize you have the convenience of getting anywhere you want because the tree, the tea is accessible. Right. Up here, you know, when Nothing. now you, if you don't have a car, there's a lot more today. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, it's, oh but back God. then, yeah, dude, no. there was nothing. No. You couldn't even get a taxi. Nope. Nope. It was crazy nope. back then. You were stuck at your house unless somebody else had a vehicle oh, yeah. to get you around. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, but I was like, I, I just, I don't know. It was, it was one of those weird things where just, you know, I was like, all right, let's, I want to move further up north and see what's up there. Because like I said, I've, I've been so, so used to the city. I wanted to see what the country aspect of it was. And honestly, I, I fell in love with it. If I wasn't going to move here or, or you know, because my, my plan was, you know, either I was going to leave, you know, live in New Hampshire or live in Colorado. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, so I, as you can see, I just, I just wanted to get some, out of the city. Yeah. Shed some of that. Yep. Like, all right. Because, you know, the, the problem with majority of the people, you know, in the city is they seem to not realize that there's much more than just the city. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not knocking the city because it made me who I am. It, it, you know, basically prepared me, but. A lot of people they don't realize that once you step out of that, and you you know you enjoy nature, you enjoy everything else. There's a whole new world. This is you know a whole new different aspect of it. And I embraced it. The minute I left, I was like, all right, I'm good. I'm like, I I like everything I see. I like the fact that, you know, there's not look a store here, you know, supermarket here, store here, store here. When I moved up here, 
everything was spread out, was yeah. spaced out. It was very spaced out. You know, yes. it, it wasn't it wasn't greedy money that was building several Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks or, or you know, it, it just it was country. It's really developed yeah. over the last twenty yeah. something years and, and for sure. That's that's okay, but you know, I, I like the fact of when it was that way because it was there wasn't a lot to offer, but you respected what was there. Yes. Yes. You, and that, I mean now it, it's just it's 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 overwhelming. It's too much, you know, and and that's the problem with New Hampshire. It's it's taking that country aspect away. Unless you go further, further up north, mm-hmm. you still you got that. But the point is, I can't remember driving up and hitting that you know that Nashua border. Okay, I was going to ask yeah. you where you yeah. where you landed. So you went to the Nashua way. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and hitting that and being like, wow, man. Wow. And that's crazy to uh, hear. Because even when uh, back in like 98, when I uh, started uh, my journey at Headlines, um, uh, they that that city was considered like moving up Mm -hmm. back then. So you got it. You got into that area about four or five years before that all happened. And it's just crazy for me to hear that Nashua was like spread out and country like because it's. Not anymore. No, I, 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 <laughs> oh, I love that was the one thing uh, you know I loved about. It. And I remember, um, because there was a there was a club in Manchester, that's uh, I forgot the name of it, but it it's like basically it's it's on the back roads. It's over where subway. It's over where um, you know how you get off the exit of Queen City. Yes, oh, that exit over there. And okay, you, and there's a I think there's a store twenty four there. It, it's been a while. Okay, that's uh, that's down by uh. uh in the back of Elm Street, yeah. back there. Yeah. But what are we talking? Exit four, five it's, off of two ninety three, I think. Yeah, it's it's back there. Uh, basically, yeah, it's either four or five. But I just know you 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 would get off that exit, and there was a club that I used to, you know, that I would all I would go to. And the first time I went there, and I was leaving, I had to pull over and ask a couple. I'm like, all right, how do I get back to Boston? And he's like, you go this way, you know, and you'll you'll end up right back, you know, where you need to go, and you're good to go. When I'm driving, dude, and all I see is trees to my left. Trees to my white, that's. my right. I'm like, oh my! I'm like, yo, this is Jasonville, man, because that's what we called it. We called it Jasonville because oh. basically, you're driving that strip, and all you're seeing is trees. You don't see any street lights. You right. don't see, and it's like, all right, just don't break down. Don't <laughs> yeah, because you're screwed. <laughs> you're don't screwed. Break down, don't pull over, man, because if oh, you man. do, you are just you. You you know, you're truly in Jasonville. That's what we called it. So I mean, after you know. Every weekend doing that, I got so comfortable with it, and I'm like, oh, I'm love, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm, I'm just liking the country. And wow. Then, yeah. And then I ended up, you know, ended up just coming back and forth, coming back and forth, and, and I ended up liking it, you know. But at the same time, like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to give up the Boston, you know, the right. Side yeah, of, it, of course, you know? of course. Um, and then what had happened was I ended up, uh, because I've had, I've had several jobs, several, several jobs, but I'm gonna be honest with you, the job that I have now is more than any of my other jobs I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. just know. bring that mic a little closer. Oh, you can pull the mic to oh, you if you okay. want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've it's 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 just I, I've had several jobs, and there was one job that I had where I worked uh, for I worked for for Merrill Lynch. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, a mortgage had, company. Yeah, right. Yes, I was a, I was what you call a wire operator. Basically, I would sit there and, and wire tickets down to New York and, and all. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I was close to getting my because you know at that time I was like all right, what do I want to do with myself and I and I loved and, and how old are you around this time? Uh, you think? Do you remember? 20, <laughs> I was twenty twenty one. Okay, 20, okay, twenty two around there. Nice, nice. Yeah. So when you got your license, teenager, you're driving up to New Hampshire, mm-hmm. you're getting the feel for it, but you're keeping Boston in oh, the yeah. background. Yeah, yeah. And now you're getting into your twenties, and now you're yeah. working for Merrill Lynch. Where because I remember, where, yeah, it was twenty one. Because that's yeah, it was it was twenty twenty one around that time. And are you brokering mortgages, or what is the tickets? Basically, what it is is when when uh you know the I work with the brokers. Okay. So basically, when they had an order or a ticket to fill, you know they would they would come over to me and say basically wire it down or send it down you know to New York. So if they wanted to buy you know you know. 50,000 shares of Microsoft. Usually it was on this little small little gray slip. Or, huh. or, yeah. 
and I would, you know, I I, I made sure that, you know, when you wire, because you don't want to make the wrong mistake. No, you can, if you, you make yeah. a mistake, even today, yeah. wiring money, dude, yeah. it's gone. Oh, yeah. It's so gone. I was very, very careful about, you know, reading it, reading it, reading it, and then I would wire it down. And if I, if, the, if there was never an issue, I always had that access, whereas they're, the person that they were dealing with, I could call them and say, hey, I just wired this down. This is this is what they wanted instead of this. So as long as it was a quick recovery, a quick fix, I mean seconds, then it was fine. Oh, gotcha, yeah, you, gotcha. You just had, yeah, you just had to be really careful. Huh. Um, yeah, and that was that was honestly my first serious job, you know. And I think had I stuck with it, it I I you know would have been fine. But the problem with that was when you're young. I call it young and dumb because when yeah. you're young, you end up meeting someone. And you end up getting to the point because I ended up meeting my my son's mother, my oldest son's oh, mother. Okay, you know, meeting her, and it, it was like I was so much focused on her, and I was less less focused on work. Oh, and that gotcha, was, gotcha. That was yeah, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're in your twenties, dude. <laughs> That's the way we work. You know, As so we're that, driven by that. That that <laughs> you know that job I ended up I ended up losing. You know, and um, I, I don't regret it because Oops. every every journey that you go upon. You know, it's a, it's a learning lesson, and it taught me that you know, you know, it, just focus and do what you need to do to better yourself. Okay. You know. Well, when you're doing this now, it having this job is this job in New Hampshire? No, it was it was in downtown Boston. Oh, okay. So you yeah. you're working in Boston, yeah. living in Boston, yeah. having fun in New oh, Hampshire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm trying. I was just trying to. What it is is at the time, because that time I was living with, I had also, I was living with two other roommates. Oh, okay. Yeah. We had our, you know, we had a little bachelor, a bachelor pad. It was a nice little spread. And, you know, with that, I was like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm going to have fun. <laughs> I was yeah. Like, I was like, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy myself. And that's kind of where it was, you know, and I was the only person at that time, you know, before I had, the, you know, I had the nice little Mercury Topaz. That car ended up dying on me up literally driving up here oh no kidding yeah it was it was one night i was like all right i'm gonna head up to the club driving up here and it died on me uh yeah it died so i had to basically they towed it back as close to my house as i possibly as they possibly could and i was like i'm just gonna leave it here it's parked off to the side i'll come back and recover when i when i can Mm -hmm. you know and they ended up towing taking it away um and then, so I was without a car for a couple of months. I was, I was oh, literally, shit. yeah, you know, and, and like I said, it's great when you, you're used to going to the city and traveling around, but when you don't have a car and you're trying to impress girls, yeah. that is a, that, no, that's it's, it's like, impossible. Girl, like, man, let's ride the T, let's T it, girl, let's T it. And you no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm all set. So, you know, um, thank God I had some friends that I, you know, that, were helping me out because one of my friends, you know, she was, I was like, Janelle, her name was Janelle. And I'm like, how did, how did you guys go about getting your car? So she told me and showed me how they, how everyone else was getting their cars and how they were working. And she knew a dealership. So she ended up introducing me to the dealership and she's like, Kevin, this is what we're going to do. You know, you're going to save money. You know, you're going to work also here, uh, you know, on this work, work also. Cause with, with me working at, at uh, Merrill Lynch, I was also I had a side job where I was working at at a club. It was okay. a club on a. It was basically a club that was on a boat. Now it's like a bouncer. Huh? Yeah. It was down towards um, it's right towards where the aquarium is. That area. Oh, over okay. There. That area. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah but yeah. you know, and and basically that was my part time gig. Oh. So I was I was saving money there, also saving that, you know, and just working, making, trying to save up enough so I can get a nice car. Because I'm like, if I'm gonna get a car, I'm gonna get a nice little car. I'm not getting a Mercury Topaz again. Yeah. So, yeah. So I ended up saving up enough money to get a 1990, uh, 1999 Acura Legend. Oh, okay. Yes. It was, it was, oh, that was, if I can go back in time and have that car, that was the true stud car for me. No it was, oh, 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 it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, nice, it was a nice oh, car back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when I got that, that kind of stepped up my game more. My confidence was like, I was, I, you know, I was just oozing with confidence because I'm like, all right, I got the car, you know, nice, you know, you know, apartment, hanging out with my friends, no worries. I'm like, all right, now we're going to up the ante. And I just, with that, started traveling everywhere I can go, you know, New Hampshire, New York. I was, I was, I was everywhere because I was, it was, you're young and you're having fun. That, that was my mentality. So, you know, I, at one point, 
I ended up meeting my son's, my oldest son's mother. And then I'm like, all right, I've had enough fun. I oh, okay. Had, yeah, yeah, I was like, I've had enough fun. You know, now I'm, I'm ready to just, you know, one person, she's the one I want to, I want to chill with and want to hang out with. That, all right. That was, that was. Before we get into, before we go, go there. Now, during all of these jobs and yeah. the car loss and everything else, mm-hmm. how is the music going? Are you? It's, no, it, it took basically, uh, I, at that point in time, I kind of put it on the back burner. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So you're trying to get career, yeah. money. Exactly. We're working on shit that is actually tangible there at this go. moment in time. There you go. Okay. Okay. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm going to put that on the back burner and just focus on figuring out. Cause I was like, I need to figure out what I want to do with myself. Right. And now we're done having fun and we're kind of getting into a relationship and stuff like that. Exactly. All right. I'm like, I'm like, all right. And that, you know, that pushed me more and more towards love in New Hampshire. Okay. Because she's from New Hampshire. All right. Because I I met her at a club and I'm like, all right. I'm like, okay. You know, she's a nice, nice person. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to just stop being a player and just, you know, one person get my, you know, this is what I want. Yep. You know, and it, it, it didn't work out, but in return, we ended up, like I said, having a son that I will not, you know, I, I, I love with my heart. And How so old is he today? He is, you're going to, he's 21 I was, years yeah, old. Yeah, that's dude. what I felt was coming on. I was like, holy shit, dude. 21 years old later in the service. Oh, really? Yes. He, he did his basic training and uh, yeah, he graduated. Holy shit. Oh yeah, dude. man. He graduated, graduated right before Christmas. Now, what what part of the military? Uh, the army. He's in the army. Yeah, he, right he, now. Yeah. Holy shit! And dude. he's he graduated, and then they let him come home for Christmas, and then he went back. Oh wow! Yeah, he went back for his training, where basically what he's going to be doing, um, and it just it 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 just blows my mind because he's I'm like my son's 21 years old. He's a grown man. He's he's in the military. It's just it, it every now and then I have to step back and say wow. Wow, you know, because I, I just never would. Right. I, I no, 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 it's it. amazing. Oh, yeah. That's great. So I'm like, you know. Good and, for him, oh, dude. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's good for him the way things are going today, but we can talk about that later. Yeah. But, yeah, I just, that's amazing, oh, dude. Oh, yeah. It's just. And, he, and, and you also have a daughter. How old is she? Oh, she's 17. 17. She's, I've, got, I've got a 21-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 10-year-old. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah, it's spread out. It, wow. <laughs> All right. You're just killing it, bro. It, oh, it's spread out, and it, it just, it it's a lot. Yeah. It's a yeah, lot. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It, with, with each kid, you, you, you tend to, you know, relax a little bit. Like, my oldest, we were like, you know, careful, 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 careful. This, you know, second one, it's like, okay, you know, we could kind of dial it back some. The, 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 you know, I, my third, Noah, I'm like, I'm like, I got minimum energy, and he is tapping it all, dude. He's... He's hitting every nerve, hitting every vet. It, oh my God! When they say that, you know, you tend to it, it tends you tend to less and less. Mm-hmm. The more kids, you, it's a true story. Yeah, it is a true. Because yeah, I've heard that I don't oh, have any kids, man, but dude, yo, it is a true story. It's seriously patience, and you know the third. You know my son Noah. It's 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 a it's a testing challenge with him. Oh, right, right, right. You know, and it, it, that, that's what I call it, the testing challenge. And it, it's like, you know, no, I need you to do this for me. And it, it's why, why? It's that why, why, why? And it's like, at some point, it's like, because I'm your father, dude, because I'm, I asked you to. We're, you know, and it, it, yeah. just, it gets to that point where it was my oldest. It's like I would ask, you know, Quentin to do anything, and he, he'd do it. No questions asked. No, no yeah. questions. Now asked. they're full of questions. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? It's so why? <laughs> and, 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 and not to go too far off track, but you can't lie to him anymore because <laughs> they just Google shit. <laughs> he's figuring out. He's figuring out a lot of things. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, you know. So, so you're in Nashua. You're you've 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 met this girl. You uh, end up having a son with her. Mm-hmm. Um, and at when at what point in time do you pick everything up? leave Boston and plant yourself in New Hampshire. Is it uh, during all of this or are you still traveling back and no, forth? I was still traveling back and forth. Oh and really? Then, yeah. And then at, uh, what happened was, like I said, you know, you're from, from uh, Merrill Lynch. I ended up going, working, leaving there. Cause yep. like I said, young, young, dumb, that young, dumb stage where you young, don't dumb realize, and full of cum, dude. Yeah, where yep. You don't realize what you have, you know, with the job. I'm like, All right. So I ended up, it ended up not working out there. And then I ended up going to work at Solomon Smith and Barney. 
which is another. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you, so you stayed in that. I, oh, yeah. I stayed in that field. I was, like I said, I was close to passing my Series 63. I, I failed it by three lousy points. Oh, wow. Yeah. Three lousy points. That I So, I mean, it was it was something that I enjoyed, and I saw myself doing it, you know, mm-hmm. in that profession. Um, but it was just, it just, it didn't, you know, it didn't work out the way I wanted to. And like I said, I have no regrets because with, with, with the jobs I've had, I consider them a life lesson. Yeah. You yeah, know? of course. Um, yeah. And then that's kind of how, how I see it all. But yeah, I ended up working at, uh, going to Solomon Smith and Barney in Manchester. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there, okay. It's, it's basically on the main strip in Manchester, um, working there. Um, and that job, that was a great job as well. It's the same thing. I was basically wiring tickets, you know, down to New York, back and forth. And unfortunately, with the big, the uh, the nine eleven act, yep, that took that hit me hard because with that, I ended up getting let go from there. Cause oh, had, yeah, because there were three, there were three of us. There was two wire operators. One was, uh, you know, like in a, like an accountant that basically handled the the money and all that, and uh, and then there was my boss, um, and then. This is around this time things weren't working out with my son's mother and me. We we you know things were not working out and it was just rough. It was really really rough because we had ended up separating. Oh okay yeah, yeah that sucks. So yeah so I mean I'm 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 trying to handle everything the best way I can. You know she she moved out. You know my son went with her. I stayed at the place that we were staying at. So I was like all right I got I got to make sure that the rent's paid. I got to make sure that all cuz it's only me and my son now. And I'm trying to figure out how to make this all work. And then all of a sudden, I walk in the office that day, and they go, um, we got to let you go. They gave me a severance package, which was, which was good. But that severance package I had basically had me taking care of lawyer fees and everything else. Oh, because, yeah. yeah. Because this, it, it was, a like I said, it was a rough, rough moment. Even today when people split up, it's just messy. Yeah. Yeah. It's messy, and I think the one thing that, like, nobody thinks of is, like, yeah, you got you split up and mm-hmm. stuff goes down, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, uh, you got lawyer fees to pay for yeah, oh, yeah. because you're not doing it on your own. No, you're going to no. – and it, it same as it was back then, it's worse now, but oh, you, yeah. there's always a lawyer mm-hmm. involved. So, like, uh, I don't know, if you got, like, an even split, it's 250 it, grand, you can kiss at least – 75 percent of that to the lawyer but it was it's horrible it was it was it was rough it was extremely extremely rough and uh you know i it it was just trying to you know trying to figure all that out and get all that all that all resolved and everything and and i mean we're 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 much better now you know my son's mother and and me it's we 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 came to an understanding which you know that that takes time there's some people who who can do that you yeah. know, and, and as time went on, it took time with us and, and you know, we're we're good now. We're cool now. Right. You know? Yeah, well um, that's good. Oh yeah. No, we're we're cool now. It's just you it just it was a rough process. Well you were both young. You're both exactly, young and, exactly. you, and, and and things weren't working no. out and sure. when we're young we get angry, our emotions take over, exactly. you don't have any actual like thinking exactly. involved in anything that you're doing. No. Most of the time we acted off of emotion. Yeah. I know I did. No, that's what it I was, was very guilty of that's acting the, off of emotion when no. I was young. So I mean, it it just it all it it ended up working out now, and that's kind of where it was, where it ended. And the funny thing about that was when finally I was running out of money. Um, my son, my son's mother's aunt, which I call him Aunt Leon and Uncle Dick, they took me in because mm. had they not taken me in, I would have had to go back to Boston, oh. and that would have okay. hurt because I don't I. My father was never a long distance father. My father was always there. Oh, Whenever okay. I needed him, it was like he was there. You know, that's that's. So you want to do the same for uh, your yeah, son? Yeah, exactly. Yes. I didn't want to be a long distance father. You know, I, I, that's not fair. That's awesome, have. dude. Yeah, that's it, awesome because you hear of so many stories where the father's not in the picture, yeah. and most of the time, which aggravates the hell out of me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, is that they choose that. Yeah. And I don't yeah. understand that because I've tried to have kids, yeah. and we can't. Yeah. So therefore, I get really upset when somebody has that beautiful opportunity and they, and they throw it down the pisser. Yeah, no. and it makes me so angry. So that's great. That's oh, good yeah. to hear, man. Was, I'm glad to, uh, that you want to be an engaged. Oh yeah, uh, father. That's amazing. And the funny thing is, her aunt was like, you know, Kevin. She's like, I know if you go down to Boston, you won't be able to spend the time with your son that you're supposed to. Mm. She's like, so you can come stay with us. 
She's like, I'm not asking you for money or anything. I'm asking you to save your money. So that way, when you move out, you can move on to an apartment. That way, you and your son will be fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, and so I, it, that that right there, I mean, it was just, it, to this day, I call him my aunt and my uncle because of, of what they've always been to me and yep. how supportive they've always been. They've always been an aunt and an uncle to me. I mean, even my kids, they go aunt and Leon and Uncle Dick. That's what they refer to them as because that's what they know them as. That's, right. That's the way, what we, you know, what I've taught them. Um, and staying with them, it, it was nice because the one thing that, People don't realize when you're a father, you, you know, that title means a lot. It's important to you. It's important to, you, to your children. But I didn't realize how important it was. I was like, yeah, I'm a proud father and proud father. But being spending time with my oldest son alone, it was it, it was unbelievable. It was like we go to the beach, you know, and I'm running around and, have, and just having the time of my life. And. One day, a stranger didn't even know who he was came up to me. He goes, "You know, man." He goes, "You're a proud father." He goes, "You." Know, I've, he goes, "I've never seen anyone have the passion and and just you. You you look like a really proud father." And some people don't understand when I say that. Good, you, you're a father, but you really are a father when you see that mm -hmm. when you when you feel it and other people see it and you don't even know. Yes, yes, yeah. So I mean, that's kind of how how I felt and how things were and it was awesome. It, it was just it was just the best time in the world for me to really bond with my son because he was really young. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, he wasn't he was a, a little over a year old. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So Very I mean, important. Oh yeah. So you know, and then the trips down to Boston where he was, you know, coming to see my mother and you know, uh, my I told my kids to call, you know, my mother Nana Bingo. The reason why she got that name Nana Bingo is because she would always play bingo. <laughs> You know, she, I, you know, I drive him down there and she'd be like, all right, you know, spend the time. She goes, okay, on the way back up to New Hampshire, can you drop me off at the church? So I can go play bingo. <laughs> so, no kidding. Yeah. So that's how the kids refer to her as Nana Bingo, oh. you know? Um, and it just, it, it just, but that, that taught me, that truly helped me understand what it meant to be a father, you know, my youngest son. And like you said, there are some fathers out there who don't realize and understand that, that is the best gift in the world. Yeah. Life can stress you out and annoy the crap out of you. But when you go home and you, you just bond with your kids, it's it just nothing else matters. I, I, I would love to say I know what you're talking <laughs> about, but I, I, I could only imagine because mm -hmm. that's something that I yeah. really when when I started uh, getting into my middle 30s yeah. and stuff like that, I started really thinking about it. And I was like, yeah, this is something I want to oh, do. Yeah. Um, but you know, even if it happened before then, I want to believe that I would oh. still be there, mm -hmm. um, because now it's not about me anymore. Exactly. exactly. And, and I feel like the people that don't take advantage of that are just so self-absorbed mm -hmm. that they just, they only care about themselves, yeah. you it, know? And I think that kind of shows the type of person, mm -hmm. um, you know, and most of the time those type of people are not people you want in your life anyways. They usually don't bring anything positive to it. No, but it just, it, it you know, and, and during all this time, still the, the music wasn't there. The music I, I had, during going through all this, I stepped away from it. I, I, you know, because like I said, I wanted to focus on my son, and then I met my wife. I met her. This is the funny thing is I met her because she's originally from Vermont. You see the pattern there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just going further and further up north, dude. Look. I'm not going Canada. I wasn't going that far, but. No, no, no. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Not that far. But, yeah, I met her because she's originally from Vermont. And I met, and at that time, uh, you know, like I said, I had put girls on the back burner because I was like, I need to make sure that me and my son were tight, we're good, we're good, you know, we're good to go. Mm -hmm. And then some buddies of mine was like, you know, Kev, you know, we haven't seen you in a long time, man. You know, you need, it's, it's time to get back out there. It's time to get back out in the game, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, I, you know, I'll give it a try. And they're like, well, there's this club, you know, called, and don't laugh at the name. It's called, it's no longer around, but it's called Flubber Buster. Flubber Buster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. all right. That is uh, a horrible <laughs> fucking name for a club. Oh my god, Lover Buster. Well, it's it's busted now, right? <laughs> Damn. The boy was like, he's like, dude. He was like, the club stays open way late. Stays open past three o'clock. He's like, you know, we'll head up there, you know, and that way he's like, you know, you can you can 
pick up where you left off. He's like, because it, it's time, man. I'm like, yeah, all right, you know, we'll, we'll do this. And, so, and what what year is this? Uh, Just to get a kind of a feel for where we're at let's now. See, we've been my wife. We've been together for twenty well, nineteen years. Because so you got married to her in two thousand two, yeah. I think I saw. Is yeah. that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're ni- we're nineteen years close to twenty. Uh, yeah, around that time. Okay, so twenty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So around two thousand. Uh, two thousand two thousand two around that time. Okay. Two thousand two two thousand one. No, because it's no. What am I talking about here? No, so, no, no. Yeah, yeah two thousand two, two thousand around that time. Around yeah. that time, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. around there. Because if you got married in two thousand two, I assumed yeah. that you have been together for at least a couple years. Yeah, you go. Was, you know what I mean? Two thousand two, two thousand two, two thousand one. Because we we were dating, and she ended up, she ended up moving down here. No kidding. Yeah, she ended up because you know. Uh, like I said, I had met her, and I was like, all right, I'm looking for, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the club, and I'm like, I'm looking for a specific type of woman. You know, my thing was I'm looking for a woman who has, you know, career, has goals, has has just things that she want to do with her life. Right. Like, there's no, there's, I don't have a problem with, you you know, getting your dance on, being, but I, I'm looking for someone who, who, you know, who fits that package. Who fits that okay, deal. Okay, yes, yes. You know, and sometimes you don't always find that at the club, though. It, that's the weird thing, <laughs> that's dude. Weird, that's that's, that's what I'm saying. Thing. I'm like, yeah, you go, it's a hit or miss. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to the club, and you're looking for, for this type of woman, and honestly, I, I I saw her, you know, at the club, and my, my, I'm walking around, you know, checking, checking, you know, checking the ladies out, and then I see her over there, and she just, you know, she had, it was just something about her. She had that, that I'm like, okay, all right, I'm like, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, and I haven't. Even, I didn't even talk to her yet. Oh but wow! I'm, yeah, but I'm feeling the vibe from her, and you know, I walk past a couple of times because you know how you, you gotta do that walk, like you know, let her know you around, your presence is there. And I'm like, yep. okay, all right, she's over there, all right. And so I walk up to her and I go, you know, uh, my friend said that I, I shouldn't talk to you. And she goes, "What do you mean?" I go, "Because you look so serious." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, you look so serious. Too serious for the club. Don't talk to her. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin's, Kevin's like, no, no, no. I'm looking for serious. Here we go. It's on. Let me see how serious you are. So, I mean, uh, I ended up, you know, we ended up, you know, dancing, getting our dance on and everything like that. And then afterwards, we went out, you know, outside and talked a little bit. And I had told her, I, you know, it, it was just everything was right. The mood was right. It was just everything was perfect. So, you know, I told her, I said, listen, I said, um, I have a son. And I said, I'm going to be honest and upfront with you. I said, my son is my love, my life, my priority. I said, he comes first. I said, so um, I'm just letting you know up front how things are. And I said to her, I said, um, if that's a problem, I said, there's no point in me giving you, you know, my phone number or you giving me your phone number. Right. I said, because I want you to understand that, you know, it, it was just the vibe was it was just it was everything was so right that I wanted to put everything up front on the table. And, and I'm just going to say this. You should. Yeah. You should. Yeah. Don't. The one thing that you should never do if you want to start something well, with somebody is start lying to them right off the bat. There you go. Just be as upfront and go. as uncomfortable as that might make you. Yeah. It's probably going to make the other person more comfortable. And if it doesn't work out because of that, then that's okay because that's probably a good sign. Yeah. yeah. If you bring your baggage, not all of it, but if you bring the the stuff that's important to you to the front of Mm -hmm. the of the of the relationship, yep, that there's no there's no oh you blindsided. There you go. And you know what I mean. So I I think that's really really good advice. Anyways. Yeah. No. You you. I wanted to get that. I wanted to let her know because it's just I was like, hey, this is what your this is what you have in front of you. This is what I'm letting you know. And I told her, I said, if you don't, and she goes, no, she goes, the thing, and that, what she said impressed me so much because she goes, no, I'm glad that you told me. She says, I would be mad if you didn't tell me. Yeah, see? And I was like, okay. I said, you know, I was like, all right, we're cool. I said, so, you know, let's, let's take it from there. And then as time went on, you know, we ended up just constantly talking on the phone because it was truly a long distance relationship. You know, I come up on weekends. Oh, you know, wow. she'd come, oh yeah. She'd come down on weekends, you know, hang out, hang out with my, you know, my aunt and uncle. Working they, that long distance oh, relationship, yeah. they, really? Yeah, that yeah. is so unheard of. Oh yeah. Well, oh. usually long distance always. No, no, it was perfect, you know, and it just it all worked out. And then finally, the one day I called and I said, "Listen, I said I got to tell you, I'm, you know, 
I'm when you're not around me, I miss you. You know, I, I just want to tell you I love you, and I'm, I'm just I'm I'm like this is right. And from there on, she you know moved down here. Uh, it just everything has just been going so perfectly. Hmm. You know, that's every, great. Oh yeah, everything. You know, like I said, our, our you know son Noah, the youngest, he's the tester. <laughs> he oh my god. So during all of this. Does the spark for making music come back? It, it, it's, it's or is it no, takes it, more time? It's slowly creeping in. Mm-hmm. But the problem that I learned when I moved up here was that see the city you have so many outlets where you can get music from or you can do music. Right. Um, up here it's like I don't know anyone. I don't have any connects. I, I who do I go to? Who I talk to? You know? Okay. Yep. And that was my problem. It was just like I mean I was you know I was home writing lyrics and writing stuff, you know, and my, you know, my books and all that, but I had no one to, to hook me up with the music because okay. what I do is I just sing. I don't make the music. Usually, you know, someone will hook me up with some music and say, Hey, can you flow on this? Oh yeah. Okay. Can okay. You? And that's kind of, that's kind of where, where my forte was Now, When I was in Boston, I had, there was, you know, I had unlimited access. So yeah. I was going to say yeah. you could play anywhere yeah. in Boston. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I had people that, you know, work with me before when I was with the group because we had certain contexts that we had that would do music for us because at the time, flashback when I was in the group, doing the new edition stuff is great. Um, and I love new edition. You know, I'm not knocking them. I'm not knocking, but at some point you got to say, Hey, we need to start doing our own stuff. If people yeah. want to take us seriously. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. You can't just keep yeah. doing cover no. songs because then you're just a cover band. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. No. So I was like, all right. I said, you know, What's what's the next plan from from there? And at that point, then we ended up just drifting apart. Me okay. at the same time, I kept the contact that we had that was doing music, and his his name is Matt Reyes, and uh, he has a he, he he still has a production it's called World One Production. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so I ended up hooking, hook still staying with him because I was like I was like, listen, I said, I don't know what's going to happen with this, what's going on with the the group. I said, but I still want to continue the music, and we ended up he ended up. I ended up staying and working with him, and he ended up making some of the most killer beats, killer songs for me. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah, because he would sit, you know, and the thing about him that I love was some of the songs we'd sit down and come up with together. This dude is just, he is just musically, he, any, everything. Wow. You know, he, yeah. So yeah, we, when you meet people like that, oh, it's just incredible oh, yeah. how their creativity oh, dude, goes. Oh, unbelievable. And, yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> it's so <laughs> awesome. Um, it, but it was unbelievable. So I, you yeah. know, I still did my music with him. And okay. worked with him. And then, like I said, as time went on, it kind of, you know, we drifted away. Yeah. You know, we I connect with him now, and it's funny how he's. Just like anything, though, it, you but know. It's funny how I, he's, he'll send me, he'll go, you remember the song that we worked on? And I listened to it, and I'm like, oh, man, I was so raw back then. I was so raw, dude. Yeah, the just, old shit. Oh yeah, I was so raw back then. I look at it, and and like I said, you know, flash forward, there wasn't that kind of outlet up here, right? It, yeah, it just, it just wasn't. It wasn't that out type of outlet or anyone I knew up here that I can, you know, do the music with. So that truly went into the back burner. And I mean, like I said, I'm just, you know, career this and that, and trying to get ahead of the game. And then finally, uh, you know, I'm like, all right. Uh, I went from doing doing uh doing um tickets and trades and all that and, and you you know wire orders and all that to yep. from there I went to doing mortgages. Like I said, I've had oh, okay. many jobs, dude. I've had several jobs and they've all been rewarding. But I'm not gonna lie, the most rewarding job is, and you're probably gonna be like, get get out of here, lying. Was working at Walmart. I'm not gonna say you're lying because <laughs> I mean. It wasn't that bad. No, no, it wasn't. And it wasn't. The reason why I say that that job was rewarding because after going from, you know, being a wire operator, right. going to do mortgage loans, and then going into that, the, the point where I realized that I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to stay in that field anymore was basically when I was doing mortgages, I was working Sunday to Sunday. Mm-hmm. And this is at the time when I had my youngest son and, I, and my daughter. And imagine working seven days a week on Sundays, calling people to try to, to try to do mortgages for them and try to refinance and do a nightmare. Yeah. So, I mean, and then you bothering deal. people on a Sunday. That's what I'm saying. Jesus Dude, Christ. That's that, that exactly. That's what I'm talking about. So finally the, the, 
when I realized that that wasn't for me anymore was one one day, uh, it was a Friday night, I was working and I was doing mortgages and I had to drive to a house to pitch the deal. Oh, Jesus. This house was in the middle of, I don't even know where the town was, but it was in the middle of nowhere. It was basically a town that like, it was like, there was basically, it was a crater and it was a town <laughs> in that crater because I'm going up a hill and I'm like, what? And, and this is before they had, you know, um, this is before they had, uh, you know, the the tracker and all that crap. Oh, okay, yeah. GPS. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way so, before. Yeah. This is, so this is this is probably before MapQuest. Before. Yes. Remember, yes. You, remember, you print that shit <laughs> yeah, out. That's it. And you have to carry it around that's, with you, brother. That is it. Because I'm, I'm, dude, that. I'm sitting there with a piece of paper, and I'm like, all right, you gotta make a left. You gotta. Make yeah, a right, dude. You make a left. You're trying to read and drive. You're like, what the? Oh my god. But it was great because we finally had directions. <laughs> yes, dude, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm driving through there. I'm driving up there, and then. I go to the house, pitch the deal, and I'm thinking it's a good deal. And I'm driving back home. You're going down. Yeah. Foggy couldn't see anything, oh, dude. Oh, great. So yep. I'm like, I'm driving like 10 miles an hour because I'm like, I'm not going over this cliff because, dude, it was so foggy. And, and as you can see, cars are coming up. You're going down. You can't see anything. So imagine if you veer just a little bit off, you are gone. You're dead. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, dude. It was in. That's why I was driving slow because I'm like, I'm not. I'm like, I love myself too much. I'm Kevin. Slow it down. I got home two hours later. Two hours later. At least you got home. Yeah, I got home. You got home. And then, you know, and then there was one day where I was just working, working, working. And my, my son, and this is when he was young. And he goes, you know, Dad, he goes, if you quit your job, then you could spend more time with us. My oldest. He said that to me. And that. It, it was just like a knife just went right yep. through my. It just it just scarred me, and I'm like, I'm like I, I can't. I, I'm like you know what I got to make a choice. Yeah. So I decided to trade. And I had to tell people I traded my you know my bronze for my brains. I said all right, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna just you know do this. And then my wife she really helped because one day she came to me. She goes, Walmart's hiring, and I was like, okay. Oh yeah, sure. No, she goes, no, you don't understand. Walmart is hiring. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. She gave me that look like, what? You need to go down there. And I'm like, okay. She's like, no, you need to go down there. And I'm like, all right. I went down there and I met Nina. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And what what <laughs> what killed me the most was when I went to the interview. I was in my suit and tie, and I was I was fully. And she goes. Are you sure you want to do this? She goes, yeah. <laughs> she goes, you're the only person I've ever known to show up for an interview in a suit and tie. She goes, you should, you, you, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, this is what I want to do. And then, you know, with Walmart, it was six, it was, I think it was six years. I believe it was somewhere around this six years later, I ended up, you know, step leaving there and then working for the Merrimack school district. Okay. And this is, this is where it, 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 the music starts to come back to me. So, so even at Walmart, yeah. and when when I met you and everything like that, and we worked together, you still weren't doing the no. music. No, you has really. You, yeah, has I you, I was I made the assumption in my brain already that yeah. like when you got into Walmart, that freed you up to no. play your to do your music stuff. Wow. No, that happened. What, what that allowed me to do was the fact that it allowed me to. Be at my son's, you know, games. Any games like when he was playing baseball, uh, you know, even though it was at that age, it, it wasn't considered baseball. It was basically him sitting out on the field and the kids punching each other, you know, yeah. down there with, with the cup and all that. That's what that was. But it, I, I, I was, I was so happy with that because that gave me the time to spend time with him, his games, see what's going on, and so on and so forth, as well as my, my, and around this time, my daughter too, because what we would do is. I'd work, the, you know, the 11 to 7, come home, you know, and take a nap or whatever. And then my daughter, what we would do is, like, I'd spend, you know, try to spend, stay awake so that way I could make sure I know what was going on, her, going on with her. We'd go to the pool, you know, in our town. And, you know, I was known as, a, you know, the dad. Because the majority of the time at the public pool, summertime, you know, the, most of the mothers are there. I, I believe, like, I was one of three dads that would be at the pool. And the, and the mothers would be like, Oh my God, you look so tired. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, you know, and they're like, okay, <laughs> no, you could take a little nap. We'll why, you know, we'll watch her. That's for you. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> See, well, that's, that's like the thing that, <laughs> that yeah, 
who, why would you pass up on that? I mean, you, you know what I mean? Like all these guys that, that don't, th- it, it's like, that's what you get for doing that. Yeah, because yeah. all the, all the women are like, wait a minute, this is a flip. This is like a flip script. <laughs> oh yeah. And this is amazing. Help him out. Yeah, Help him was, out. Was, you know what I mean? So that's awesome. Oh, it was just, it was the best. And honestly, that allowed me to spend more time with my kids. Okay, you know, so it, so yeah. the, the going to Walmart gave you more time for your kids. Yeah, it, it honestly, it, it 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 helped out dramatically because I, in the sat, the thing about it was I was no longer stressed out. Gotcha. I was yep. no longer stressed out because I'm a lot I'm, less stress. Oh yes, I'm changing from that from that lifestyle to this lifestyle and going to Walmart. You do what you need, do what you have to do, do your job, and then you go home. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, that, that's what it was, and I wasn't seven days a week working. No, no, definitely not. And, and you know, and that that helped out a lot. Yeah. And like I said, as you as you could see when I was working there, usually I'd have my headphones on singing, and and you guys would be like, yeah, where's Kevin? Oh, just follow the voice. Just follow the voice, man. We always knew we were singing and dancing. <laughs> just follow the voice, and I and like I said, the music was still. It wasn't. It wasn't. Still wasn't there because, like I said, I didn't. I wanted to make sure my kids were okay and the resources they weren't they they really weren't up here, and then what changed that was uh, was Walmart they do every year this talent show they do the talent show thing that they have you know outside, and Tony you know he you know I said yeah I told Tony I said yeah I said I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do the audition you know, I'm gonna do the talent show and I ended up doing it and I kind of shocked a lot of people because they wow. they knew. That I could sing, but they didn't realize, they didn't that realize yeah. how well you yeah. can sing. Yes. So what I, you know, so the song that I did was Journey. Oh, don't, don't stop believing, dude. That's a great track. Oh yeah, great track. So I, I was singing that, and everyone's like, "Oh my god!" They're like, "Wow, that's Kevin. That's coming from him. That's his voice." They're like, "We always thought you were a big cuddly bear, and we didn't know you could sing." And I was like, "Yeah," I said, "I, you know," and and Tony was like. Kevin, that's he's uh, he was like real. That's really good, really. You know how telling the accent. Tony, yes. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. You know, and I ended up winning that, winning that. Oh, I that's came, awesome. Yeah, I came in first place, and you know, and I was, I was like, all right, I was like, uh, okay, everything's going good, everything's fine. Maybe I should start, you know, looking back into seeing what I could do and, and, and seeing. Yeah, dig into that into, passion. Yeah, dig into it yeah. more. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, people, they seem to like it, and it just. It just from that point on, I said, "All right, what's the? How do I? What do I need to do to get back into this?" And you know, and majority of the stuff that I was writing, I would have the melodies in my head, so I mm-hmm. kind of knew how the song would start and how, and you know, how it would all work out from there. Okay, yeah, yeah. yep. Um, and then I ended up, you know, linking up with some people from the Walmart in Manchester. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, cause they, you know, they, you know, ended up linking with them, and I'm like, "All right, all right, you know, I'm still gonna focus on making sure my family's right." Yep. I, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't as all in it what, as I am now. So I had, cause I had to make sure everything was right. Everything was good. And then the long, you know, long story short, I ended up leaving Walmart. Yep. And then, yep. And then cause I, I think did you, you, did you leave before or after I got fired? It was cause the, the first time I was there, I was in the, I was in the, the, the Amherst one. Yes. And then I ended up leaving there. Because of all the craziness that was going on there. Yeah, Amherst was getting nuts, yeah. and 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 um, I think I had gone to days when you were still on yep. nights, but then I got fired because yep. my piss came back hot. Yeah, um, and that was uh, two. That was uh, eight years ago now. Yeah, eight years it, ago. Yeah, because like I said, I'm at the district. It, it that was like the last yeah. time we really yeah. talked was. When I got fired, yeah. it was it was over. I wasn't yeah. literally allowed back. <laughs> so, yeah, it, so you ended up leaving there probably I, a little bit after that. Then. Yeah, because I ended up remember I ended up taking I, I you know I I ended up leaving, and then I came back. But I went I came back and worked at the one in Manchester because Nina was in Manchester. Yeah. And okay. She, yeah, remember, really? She was, yeah. I ended up working there. Now, because, were you at the old location? Uh, down yes. down yeah. by the Honda dealership. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it was before they yeah. went super center. Oh yep. yeah, okay. that that was that was. I, I ended up going there because what I was doing. This is when I had got the, the job at the district as well, because I was doing working for working at the school. Uh huh. And then I would once I got out of there from three to at school was three to eleven. I get out of there, and then I would go to Manchester. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I would. So go you were doing both. I of was them. doing. Yeah, I was doing both of them. 
Jesus yeah. Christ, I was, dude. Because I just wanted it. That's what I'm saying. I was working them to make sure everything, because my wife, uh, you know, she she's always had my back. She's mm-hmm. always been supportive. And I'm like, we you know, we have to make sure that everything's taken care of. You know, everything, bills are paid, everything's all taken care of. So it worked out perfectly. And then finally, my body could not. I was going to say, yeah, you, you your, eventually your, shut down. Your dude. body can only do so much. And yeah, as time went 100%. on, I'm getting older. I'm like, uh, no, I, you know, and Melissa, Melissa, she one day, she goes to me, she goes, Kevin, she goes, why are you doing this? I said, you know, because I said that extra money makes it. She goes, yeah, but she goes, you're killing yourself. She yeah. Goes, you're killing yourself and your body. She goes, so she goes, well, you know, just just make figure out what you want to do. She goes, but if you don't, you don't do this because it's going to hurt you in the long run. And then I said, you know what? I said, I talked to my wife. I said, babe, I said, I, I can't, my body can't physically do it anymore. You know, I can't do it. I said, so I'm going to step away from Walmart and I'm just going to focus on working for the district. Nice. You know, and that, and it, it all worked out. It worked out perfectly because, and like I said, people might knock Walmart, might have issues with Walmart. I don't have an issue with it. The reason why is because when I first started working there, Nina, she's like, Okay, she goes, you know, I want you to, you know, invest in your 401k. And I'm yep. like, I'm like, nah, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I just want, she goes, no, listen. No, you, no, no. Invest yeah. in it. Then that way she goes, if you, when you retire, you got that money there still. Yep. You know, and that's all I was thinking of. Well, at the time, me and my wife, we were, you know, renting. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm like, I was like, I'm sick and tired of renting. I'm sick and tired of paying someone else's mortgage. Yep. You know, I'm like, no, we can't. I'm like, we, we, we were hard workers. We, you know, we should be able to enjoy our own, you know, benefits. Yep. We should be able to enjoy the fact that we can come into our own house Yep. and we're paying our own mortgage and we're getting credit for it. You know, that was the thing that I talked to my wife and she's like, yeah, you're right. So, you know, I, I, I was like, all right. I said, I got this little Walmart thing, this 401k thing. I don't, you know, I said, let me see how much is in there. You know, surprise you. Yeah, because yeah. you can use that money if you're a first time home buyer. That's what I did. Yeah, use it as your first mm-hmm. time home buyer, and you don't get hit with the, you know the penalties. So no, all no that. penalties, yep. no taxes. Yeah, exactly. It so, was awesome. Yes. So I called them and I said, "Hey, I'm gonna check out," and they're like, and it, they told me, and I'm like, "All right, cool, thank you." I hung up the phone. I said, "Hey, babe, let's do this." I yeah. said, "Let's make it happen." That's so crazy yeah. that you did the exact yeah. same thing I did. <laughs> To get this fucking place. <laughs> I was like, hey, what do we got in the four? Mm-hmm. And I do. And they told me and I was like, sold. Yep. You yep. know what I mean? I got yep. my down payment. Because yep. you're like, how do I come up with a down payment? That's that's 401k. A, and that's that's the difficult part. Because most people, they go, I want to buy a house. And it's like, you know, you got to save up a certain percentage just to get in that house. Just has a down payment. Yep. And and that is the hardest part about what most people are trying to get get that money. Because this day and age. You don't, uh, you know, that luxury you don't have because the cost of living is constantly going up, dude. Dude, saving is is extremely complicated. I think this has been one of the worst years yeah. ever. It's it, it just, it's that's just, it's you know, and the, the thing that annoys me about that is cost of living is constantly going up. You know, salaries sometimes are going up, but you, you got you got to have you know, constant cost of living. Should be, shouldn't you know? It should all be compatible with what you're what you're making. Yes, you shouldn't have to work harder, harder, harder to to to, to just survive, uh, or to just do the same thing you were doing exactly. yesterday. Exactly, and I'm like, I'm like, how does that work out? That that yeah. that makes no sense. Yeah, that no, makes. I agree you know, with you. You on know, that. and I that that's the one thing. And I mean, we ended up, you know, got we ended up getting the house, you know, and everything was just like I said. Everything kept flowing and flowing and flowing, working. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, when I'm at the high school, you know, I'm there. I, I ended up getting the, the 3 to 11 shift. And for some reason, the job gods helped me out because I remember coming back from a vacation and one of the buddies at work, he was like, yeah, did you hear about them posting about a, the day spot, the day position? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because the thing about that is to get a day spot, you got to be there a long time. You got, oh. yeah, because they go seniority first. Okay, yeah, yeah, schools, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, always seniority first. So I, I thought he was, you know, joking with me, pulling my chain. And I'm like, he's like, no, it's right here, the job posting. So I posted for it, and I'm like, I'm not going to get it. I'm like, they're like six, seven people ahead of me. Lo and behold, my boss comes to me, he goes, and he didn't want to tell me because he knew that 3 to 11, I was, I was one of the hard workers there. Yeah. And he comes up to me, he goes, yeah, so you got that six thirty to to 
two, you know, two thirty shift. You're you're now officially a day custodian. Really? Yeah. The like I said, dude, the job gods were looking out for me, man. And I'm like, oh, because my fear was with at this time, my youngest. Yeah. I wasn't going to be able to do the things and spend time with him like I spent with my other kids. And that was my biggest fear. I was like, I'm not going to be able to see his basketball games or anything like that. I was missing. I was like, missing I, I, out. I felt bad because I'm like, I'm missing out on this, you know, and it's not fair to him when I had that opportunity with my other kids, you know, and this was perfect, dude. 630 in the morning to 230. I get home before he does. If he wants to do basketball or anything like that, I am there. If he, you know, needs me to be the coach, I am there. Yeah. It, it, it wow. yeah it all it it all it was if it was if that that one time it all worked out well this is th- that that's the way these things go yeah. you it, they just fall into oh, place dude, just, things just fall into place like where you were mm-hmm. compared to where you wound up mm-hmm. is just because of the way that your life went oh, and yeah. everything kind of worked itself out even though you may have lost here or gained here or lost there mm-hmm. everything works itself out you mm-hmm. just have to give everything time and that that's that yeah that's what it's all about cuz i you know it's just i was that was my biggest fear i'm like how how I and mean, i told my wife i said babe i said how are we going to make this work right and when this came it changed everything because i'm like all right I'm like babe we're good now you know whatever you know whatever sport no wants to play i'm there you that's know? awesome so it's like you know all right, dad, I want to play basketball, you know, or I want to play football. I end up being the coach nine times out of 10. I'm the coach, which I, I love. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like this right now he's playing, uh, he's, he's doing basketball. I'm the coach, <laughs> you know? Oh, so, I'm, yeah. So I'm coaching him and, you know, and the other, the, the other players. And one thing I learned is as a parent, you, it's your kids don't listen to you when you coach. <laughs> Do your kids ever listen no, to no, you? No, no, they really don't listen to oh, you. When you okay, they, okay. No, they really, it's like, because they're like, all right, I got that dad pass, even though he's a coach. So yeah. I'm like. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I'm so like, now they're like, that's my dad. Yeah, it's yeah. like, so I'm like, Noah, I'm like, all right, I need you to, I need you to, you know, guard this, this kid here. And it's, it's, why, why? And I'm like, and I've, I'll explain to him before we even go to practice. I'm like, buddy, I'm like, if I ask you to do things, it's because it's going to better you and help you. So, so you need to listen to me. You need, if I tell you to guard this person, guard this person. If I tell you to dribble or shoot this way, I said it's only to get you better. Yeah. And as soon as it, right out the air. It's oh, of course. Go, just of go course. He's like, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Minecraft. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Or freaking Aquafina, you know? I don't know what they're watching today. Uh, I'm like, but, but yeah. it's, it, that's kind of how it is. It's just, but like I said, this has allowed me to truly, you know, be there for him because that was my biggest fear that I was going to, he was going to miss out on that. Oh, that's, that, that, that's awesome. Oh yeah. I hate to do this, but I've got to use the bathroom <laughs> and let's, let's pause on that because Most I definitely. feel like that's going to be a yeah. great position to come back definitely. on because I feel like we're getting, we're getting, getting to the close clim- to the, getting to the music getting here. Getting to the climax right. part. Oh my God. I apologize. Everyone. <laughs> Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell that? It's right here at the bottom of the screen, or you can click the link in the description below the video. I love this website. I can't express this enough. Look, they got brand new winter jackets for your skiing and snowboarding needs. They've got brand new skateboards. Get some socks. All right. They got hats. They got leggings. They got t-shirts, they got gloves, they've got everything you're looking for, for all the seasons, all year round, all their products are great quality at a great price, and you can only get them right here. That's right, slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, that's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. You're not sure how to spell it, it's right here at the bottom of the screen, or you can click the link in the description below the video. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we are open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. And you can give us a call, 603-814-4171. We have got it all. That's right. Flavored juices, menthol juices, flavored menthol juices, disposables, rechargeable disposables, 
a CBD, HHC, THCP, CBD, loose flower. I mean, we have just got everything you're looking for today at New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and I'm excited to tell you that we have everything in stock. Everything's going out as fast as it's coming in, and it's an exciting time. All the juices are switching over to synthetic nicotine, which I think is going to be overall better for everything. And we have every possible way to help you get rid of those cigarettes. That's right. It, that's the whole point to vaping in the first place. Get rid of the cigarettes and then hopefully get rid of nicotine. A lot easier said than done, but we are here to help you do it. That's right. Come and see us, the guys at the gallery, and we're going to help you get away from those cigarettes. All right? And you can do this here at New Hampshire Vape Gallery, located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. Feel free to give us a call, 603-814-4171. And as always, I look forward to seeing you there. NaturalBossNH.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. I love this website. I absolutely do love it. They got that foot and body soak that's great for melting those stressful days away. The body balm and the lip balm are great to help your cracked, dry skin uh, get some moisture back to it and heal that up. I love it. The salve, amazing. Worked great on my neck uh, when it was really dry and the cold. Oh, it was just It was awful. And that salve did amazing. Yeah, they got beard oil, uh, two different scents, Woodsman's and Dapper. And then, of course, Feeling Rosy Foot and Bath Soak. Six bucks on sale while supplies last. You can get all of this here at naturalbossnh.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. Buy one or all six of these products today. And now back to talking with Kevin. We are back into recording. All right. Woo, I feel so much better. <laughs> all right, so... We're at the school. Things are working out. You uh, are now there. You're coaching. You're doing all your stuff. Everything's going really, really good. And this is when the the this music kicks it, back. This is when it starts to. This is when it all starts to come back. You know, because like I said, I'm at the school, and you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm still doing. I'm at school, and I'm like, all right, you know. I'm, I'm saying to myself, Kev, do you still have the, do you still have the voice? You still got everything going on? Is it still there? And then a buddy of mine, um, he goes, there's a he goes, there's a spot where you can go where basically, you know, underground artists just like you that are up and coming and trying to trying to just trying to get into business and trying to get people to know who they are. You know, the site you go on there and um, usually they have some artists that you know are just specifically focus on making music, just the beats and everything. And then you have some that are singers and you have, it's, it's kind of basically an underground, you know, communication of music. Uh, and he's like, all right, he's like, why don't you try the site out? And the site, it's a site. It's actually called band lab. Okay. You know, just, you know, just type that in and you'll, you'll, you'll get, you know, it'll get you on there. And honestly, you, you'll hear some music and you'll hear artists that are not on, you know, what you're hearing now on ra local radio stations or just in general. And you can tell that these artists are hungry. Yeah, you can tell that. All right, they're like, all right, you know, even if I don't make it, I'm still gonna have that passion. I'm still gonna have that drive. And some the artists are on there. Honestly, I listen to them more than I listen to what's out now. Oh, okay. You know, so if you ever have a chance, just go on, go on the Band Lab and and type that in, and you'll you you know, it's artists from all around. It's not just local artists. Mm -hmm. It's artists. It's even artists from like overseas. Well, what I'll do is yeah. I can put a little yeah. thing at the bottom of the screen, yeah. and we can put a link in the description Definitely. at the uh, in the video. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so people will just be able to click that there link I mean, and I, just go there. And I, I've linked up with so so many people. You know, so, you know, so many so many musicians from there. Um, and they're they're honest with you. They'll tell you, hey, if if you if you if it's not your if it's not really you, they'll let you know. And that that I respect that the most because yeah, you know. I, I hate those artists that put stuff out and you go, why did you, why did you put it out? It, it doesn't, it, it just, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like you or it sounds like someone else. Okay. You know, and th those are the type of artists that I'm like, you, you can only get so far with that, you know, ha have your own, have your own style, be your own individual, 
you know, and people respect you more for that. And on there, they, they, you know, they're straight up, they'll tell you, you know, and on that, on there, I ended up getting, you know, I think it was over, over right now. I think I'm at 1.9 something followers. So I'm, I'm doing, I'm, you know, 1.9 thousand, thousand followers. I'm doing good. Oh, on, uh, oh yeah. On, on Spotify on, on or band lab. on band lab. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cause, Cause like I said, that that's all, uh, that's all underground and up and coming. It's not, you know, they're not commercial. That's they're, great. Yeah, they're not, you know, when, and constructive yeah, criticism is also oh, extremely yeah. Oh, yeah. like I always welcome it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I like as I've gotten older, I've realized it's not somebody tearing me apart no. or picking you picking you up. Mm -hmm. It's they're giving you something like you need to work That's, on this. And it's not a bad thing no. to have that pointed out and to work on whatever that is. That, That's good. It's good for only, you. Plus, that's the only way you're going to grow. Right. And that's what, well, yes, 100%. You that's know, the only way you grow. If, if you're surrounded by people that are yes, yes, men, you know, that yes, yes you ain't going anywhere. You, yeah, exactly. You, I mean, you, if you're already there, then you, you're yeah. good. But if you're not there yet, that'll just hold you back. Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. So I ended up linking on there. And, you know, I ended up hooking up with some some people, you know, that was like, all right, I got the music for you. Can you can you flow on this? Can you flow on this? And I ended up getting a lot of hits of people saying, hey, can you can you flow on this music, flow on this music? And that kind of started me off to that. That got me back into the game. You know, that, okay. got, that truly got that's me, awesome. Oh, yeah. That truly got me back. So this, in, this is getting that fire oh, yeah. ignited. It's and getting me back in the game. So I'm like, all right, you know, and I'm, I'm writing, writing lyrics and everything and I'm flowing on it. You know, I've got the software that's like, OK, I can do this. Nice. And, you know, and um, that was a cool thing about FanLab as well. They, you know, they have the software that will help you, you know program or figure out how you want how you want your music to be okay so they have a program for you to like make your own beats exactly. and music yeah. and yeah. rhythm and mm -hmm. uh breaks and stuff exactly. like that so okay you know, and, and if you you know and say you're an artist that you know you don't use that site but you you want to load your music on there you can oh okay yeah. and then if you want to share that music with other people so that you know they can come up with a song or some lyrics for it Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you you share, oh, and yeah. then they can like take it, and they can yeah. add to it, and then they bring it back, yes. and so you you got like almost a full collaboration exactly. with like anybody. Exactly. That so is. if you like this artist, you're like, hey, I came up with this, you know, check. Okay, all right. And that's, and that's nice community. Oh yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's how I got you know involved in that, and you know, one song turn it to another song another song next thing you know i'm i'm just i'm pumping out songs and the quality it's good everything's good i've listened to yeah. a lot of your tracks <laughs> they're they're pretty good yeah. i'm not i'm not yeah. saying that none of them are bad no. and you know i like i like the music i like the sound yeah. i like the rhythm mm -hmm. you know a lot of uh artists that are up and coming or they drop stuff to youtube and stuff like that yeah. it's like well it, the track and the idea was good, but where where's the where's the pieces that I was you know what I mean? But yeah. like you you told me about everything that you've been doing. Uh, I think it was almost two months ago now. Yeah. Yeah. So I've listened to about seventeen to twenty tracks yeah. of yours, and and they're just they're they're good. I like the, the just the beats and the drops mm. and the breaks and. Yeah, everything going on. You oh, know, yeah. you do, you do, uh, there was like some dance, there's some rap. Oh, yeah. I was like, wow, there's that's, such a, a nice variety that's of why stuff. I call it. So that's, that's, and that's how I came up with the style. That's why I call it Wild Child. Oh, okay. Because that's where that's from. It's just if you, if I hear a beat and like it doesn't have to strictly be hip hop, it, it could be country, you know, like, you know, there's one song, there's one, one song that I worked on called Lake House, um, Lake House Party. Yep. And that's all. That's a country song. It's straight country song. And then when someone gave, someone sent me that beat, they said, "Hey, I got a country beat. I want you to to work on it. Tell me what you think. Can you make lyrics for it?" And I sat down. and I'm like, I'm like, how can I do this? And I heard the beat, and I'm like, all right. I'm like, Lake House Party, sunny days. And I'm like, all right, okay, I got that. And I'm like, all right, how can I'm saying to myself, how can I make this a country song? But have that that feel to it where it's it's strictly country, but you know it's a summer song where you're at the lake house hanging out with your friends. Yeah, you know. And then I was like, all right, I'm like, all right, I got that chorus hook. I'm like, all right. And then I was like, so long, no way to time. And I'm like, all right, I got that. And it, it ended up forming into a song, and that's you know country. That's lake awesome. house party. And I'm like, all right, I'm like, so I got that country song. What else can I do? And I you know dipped into reggae, dipped in you know. 
it, it just it's a that's and that's how I developed the style wild child. It's like whatever wow. fits your mood. If you, you know, but you got to make sure you, you're coming on point with it, and it's just not you're just doing it. But whatever fits your mood, however the song flows, that's that's how I flow with it. It's really incredible to hear this because I I will I have to go back to Walmart where you're just <laughs> singing and bebopping around the building, yeah. you know, follow the voice stuff like that. So I was always like, it was always comical, yeah. it was always fun, oh, yeah. and it was it never seemed like. So it's nice to hear that it's it's turned into something oh, yeah. more serious, oh, yeah. and uh, I, I love hearing that because I would have never <laughs> uh, known yeah. that you had done this, and uh, if it wasn't for me getting back on Facebook, to yeah. be honest with you, <laughs> I was like, oh, I've been off of Facebook for like six years, mm -hmm. you know, and then I wanted to promote this thing, yeah. and I was like, and that's how we linked up again, oh. and then I, I I didn't realize that you were actually. Uh, uh, doing it. Oh yeah. You know what I mean. It wasn't just fun. It's not just comical. It's actual yeah. uh, tracks laid down, good verses, and thought behind oh, all yeah. the uh, instrumentals and stuff like that. So my my thing was to never. I, 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 my thing is to never try to sound like someone else or try to. Mm -hmm. fit, you know, I, I don't want to be in the category of like mumble rapper. Or, or, you know, because there's some rappers out there. Yeah, because then you're stuck. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. You know, when, like I said, it it helped my it helped the fact that, like I said, my dad when I was young, I can remember, seriously, remember him playing music, you know, until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And, I mean, we're in, and, and the neighbors are like, yeah, that's that's Melton. That's my dad. You know, he's playing the music. And then I, I can remember there was a sign of me saying, okay, you know, there's that music. What other music is, is music is, is music is out there? You know, then yep. then listening to the Aerosmith, Aerosmith, and I'm like, oh, okay, and then listening to country, then listening, you know, so I kind of had exposure to all 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 sides of music. Oh wow, you, you know, that's even, a, that's awesome. Yeah, even, you know, and I'm like, and then I had my 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 grunge and my rock stage where you know I'm listening to Evanescence and oh, it's just you know I'm listening to all that. So I, I kind of I, I got. I got hit and exposed exposed to a lot of you know type of music styles, and that helped me craft my style to what I have now. Oh wow! Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, so I mean, and then it, it, what really what really got the hits and people noticing who I was, who I am, you know, my my style and everything was the kids at the high school. One day, I, you know, they a kid walks up to me and I was at the high school and he goes he goes yeah he goes Kevin you know um do you do music or do you sing or anything like that? I said, yeah, I do. I said, you know, I do my little thing here and there. And they're like, really? It was like, really? You do? I said, yeah. I said, I said, do you have any songs out there? I said, yeah. I said, actually, I, said, I have a couple songs out there. I said, check me out on SoundCloud. Check me out, you know, on, on YouTube and all those. And, and, and they're like, all right, really? And I said, yeah. And I gave them, you know, my name and everything, the artist I'm under. And all of a sudden, the next day, came back. One of the kids was like, wow, you really are, you know, you really do, you really are an artist. I said, yeah, and then what's, from that one individual at the school, I mean, this was, like I said, I've been at the district for over nine years, so you can imagine, this started six years ago, because when I went on the day shift, from, from from that point on up until now, um, every year, you know, kids are coming in, and they're like, do you do this? And then they, mm -hmm. they're, they're, their brothers and sisters are saying, hey, that's the, that's the janitor there, he has a SoundCloud account. You know, and it's his music. That's yeah. hilarious. It's like, yeah, it's like he has, you know, he's on YouTube and all that, and he has the music and all that. So I, with what I have now, like I said, I have over a hundred songs. That's awesome. So I've been, I've been, you know, I just, I've been constantly, you know, writing lyrics and writing, doing that. But I have, has a right because one day I had to stop and sit down and say, really, how many songs do I have actually out there that's on that's on all these sites? And I counted, and it was over a hundred songs, and I was blown away. Wow. Yeah. I was, wow. I was blown away. I'm like, all right, so, you know, and the kids, usually when I put something new out, uh, you know, they'll come to me and they'll go, Kevin, when's that new stuff coming out from you? When's that new hot stuff coming out? I'm like, I'm working on it. They're like, all right, you know, I'm like, just let me know when it comes out. And, you know, I let them know. What usually happens is, like, they get notifications any because they follow me. Yep. Yeah. So yep. usually when I, I put something out, you know, I get that ding, and it's like, you know, it, it's out there. You know, and it, it usually, and they usually come back to me. They go, Kevin, that's, yo, that's really good. And that's really, I like that, that beat and everything, the song, the lyrics. You know, you, you and, 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 and not for nothing, but their opinion is actually really important yep. because that's the next generation. Yep. So exactly. they're the ones absorbing everything. You know, it's not the older crowd that you need to be accepted no. by. Yeah. 
And people are like, oh, well, I, I need... It's like, no, that's yep. the crowd. If you're not in with them, yep. you're probably not going to do very well. Exactly. So yes. that's really incredible to get that feedback from oh, yeah. those guys. You oh, know the, what I mean? The, the, you know, and I, that that's what I love the most, the input from them. Because I tell them, I go, honestly, what you think? I tell them, be honest with me. I tell me the truth. What do you think about the song? How do you, you know? And, yep. And, and they go, oh, you know, you... you sounds a little, you might need to add this or add that or change this. And I, you know, it's good that their opinion, because they're the ones who are going to like it. Yeah. A hundred percent, dude. That's, that's your target audience. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know so, what I mean? I, mean, I did. I deal with the same thing with the podcast. Yeah. My, my target, my audience is a uh, uh, average of 25 to 44, mm-hmm. but I have a small percentage of 18 yeah. to that 22 mark. Yeah. Um, and it's grown over and it, and then that's important because mm-hmm. though even though 25 to 44 is is a good age bracket I'm trying to get a lot of my messages out mm-hmm. to the people before you turn 21 yep. because even though I, I I don't want to always be talking about alcohol and uh, addiction mm-hmm. and stuff like that um, it is very important but that's when the addiction and the, and then stuff happens and exactly. sometimes that's when it's happening and you don't even know it's happening exactly so exactly. if i can help point something out before they get into their 20s before mm-hmm. it can actually ruin their mm-hmm. life forever yeah then that's what i want to do yeah and with music those are the that's what they're doing mm-hmm. they're listening to music 24 7 i haven't oh, yeah. listened to music in six years oh uh, it you know it's you it's, know you'd be it's just constantly, constantly. so it's a it's a different even though like uh, same same ideas, mm-hmm. you know, podcasting music, yeah. it it you know your audience, you you want to be targeting those guys oh, yeah. always. Oh, yeah. That's that's going to be your come up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, is the younger definitely. crowd. And I mean, it just it's they they like I said, they seem to love it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it's kind of restored my passion for the music. Now this, this even though this kind of goes what. Got you in the news. Now I oh. try that, that. Hold on. I tried to find this. I saw you on the news. Yeah. I I, I watched the friggin'. I don't remember if it was Channel Nine or what. Dumb, yeah. And me me and Nicole are like, that's Kevin. What's he doing on the news? So we and because it was so fresh, you could find the article. You could mm-hmm. click on it. You know what I mean. But then I tried to find it. So that I could I could bring it up and yeah. actually have it for the podcast. I couldn't find it. So so it was a, a singing and dancing janitor and what it's right. It's the high five custodian. This was before high five custodian. Okay, the, so I'm totally wrong. Yeah, this is that's be- fine. <laughs> I'm used to being wrong. Hundred <laughs> percent. This was before COVID. This is way before oh, COVID. That's so why I couldn't had, find yeah, it. What had happened was, well, like I said, when I started working on the day shift, um, I, I heard the stories about how basically they would, you know, the, the kids, kid, how they would treat, the, you know, the custodians, the day custodian. And I said to myself, okay, I'm coming in here. No one really knows me. Um, but at the same time, I still want you to respect me just like I'm going to respect you. And what had happened was uh, it started from basically the lunch breaks. Now, you you, you remember you were in high school mm-hmm. and you are in the lunchroom. You know, you're throwing stuff on the floor. You could really care less about, yeah. y- you know. Um, I, cha- I decided that I wasn't going to be that custodian. I was going to be the custodian that says, hey, you know, you dropped that on the floor. Please pick it up, you know. It's a common respect and courtesy thing. Or I was going to be that custodian that says, hey, you left your lunch tray on the table. Can you Can you help me out? You know, can you pick up after yourself? Because if you're not, you know, it's a life lesson. If you're not picking up after yourself at school, and you're not doing it at home. You're not learning anything at all. You're just basically, you're like, okay, everyone's going to clean up after me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it got, you know, that one day I went in there and, uh, you know, the kids were throwing stuff on the floor and, and making a mess. And I, you know, I said, no, we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to change that. We're going to change that. And I talked to the, you know, the principal and, there was a kid one day where I said to him, I said, hey, can you pick that up that you just threw at me? And he goes, eh, I don't need to do that. You know, my my parents' tax money pays your salary. You know, gave me that attitude. Okay. And I said, okay. I said, so we're going to do this. We're going to play this game. And I had talked to the, one of the principals at the high school because there, there are actually three principals there. 
Oh, Jesus. Yeah, there's three. Three it, principles? Yeah. You, oh, wow. You, you know, and they each, you know, there's three there. And believe it or not, they're every, those three, they take on a lot. They yeah. take on a lot. Um, and I talked to one of them, uh, Mr. Berger, and I said, yeah, Mr. Berger, I just want to let you know I was in the cafeteria and this kid said this to me. And I said to him, you know, I said, um, you know, I'm still a person. You know, I, I you know, and I'm, I'm sorry, but. I'm not going to let any anyone talk to me like that. I'm not going to let a kid disrespect me like that. I said, yeah. Because if you do that, if you let that happen, then everyone, then they're going to continue to do it. I said, so we need to, what are we, you know, what are we going to do about this? From the get-go, he was like, nope, that's unacceptable, Mr. Freeman. We're going to fix this. We're going to resolve this. Talked, you know, and he actually talked to the kid, said, hey, Mr. Freeman, you don't do that to him. You don't disrespect him. You don't treat him that way. And, right. and as time went on, that respect factor, you know, it, it, it kept going. Kids actually started respecting. They started doing what I asked them to do. I didn't have any issues or anything like that with, with any, any kid whatsoever. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's it, great. Oh, yeah. It, it, you know, as long, I had that support from them. And then uh, what had happened was I was like, all right, you know, I said, what, what can I do to show my, my way of saying, hey, thanks for respecting me like I respect you. I said, you know, every morning, you know that every morning when you were in school and you'd come in and you'd be tired. And you'd yep. have to look like, oh, my God. This is I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. My yeah. parents made me get exactly. here. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I said to myself, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I said, I'm going to stand at the door and welcome the men. I'm going to stand at the door and say, hey, you know, hi, thanks for coming in. What's up? High fives, you know. I'm going to do that because if I had someone doing that for me in the morning, it would make all the more difference. You know, if I yeah. have, if I'm walking into school and you know, the janitor, whoever they're there, they're like, they're, pump, they're pumping me up there, getting me excited to go in, you know, uh, that makes my day. That starts well, that my day. changes their course exactly. too. I mean, that changes everything. The way that they were thinking by the time they got mm -hmm. up to that door, all of that probably just, yeah. Oh, Went out the window, whatever, whatever was holding them down, exactly. whatever was making them upset. Exactly. Hopefully they just got to let go of that for a little oh, bit yeah. and you bring up their mood and now they're happy to be in class. And that, that's what it was all about. So, I mean, I, I said, all right, let's start with the saying, Hey, what's up? Come on in, you know, getting them all pumped up. And then I said, all right, let's, let's throw in a high five. So every kid that would come in, I'd open the door, have the door wide open. I'm like, what's up? What's up? What's up? Giving the high fives. And then that's awesome. that, yeah, that's how that. And then what happened at that point was one of the ladies at the school, they said, you know what, Kevin? They said, your energy is unbelievable. They said, we don't understand where you get this energy from in the morning. Hey, I'm, I'm going to do you mind if like we film you? We, we you know, we film this coming in, you know, the kids coming in and all yep. that, you know, and, and what they did was they ended up posting it on Facebook. Oh, okay. They posted, you know, on Facebook, and I got the name High Five Custodian. It spread, dude. I was going to say, to make the news, it had to have made some noise. The town in Merrimack, start, it started there, and it just blew up and blew up and blew up. And next thing you know, it went from Facebook to, to basically local venue, local newspaper, news companies picking it up, seeing this. And it, it ended up, I ended up being on Chronicle. Yes, uh, yes, that's what it Chronicle. was, Chronicle. Uh, and I was at first, I'm like... Oh, I was trying to remember. Uh, yes, I was at first, I was like, what? What's going on? It's just on Facebook. And next thing you know, Chronicle called the school. They they, they called the school. Well, they have to. Yeah. They have to. To say if it's okay. And then and then next thing you know, the principal, one of them, he comes into, he has me go in the office and he's like, listen, he's like, Kevin, I got Chronicle on the phone right now. <laughs> they want to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. You're like, okay. is Fritz gonna tell my story? <laughs> so, no, there's and this there's more, dude. There's oh, no, more. No. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, all right, all right. And you know, and I'm I'm talking to them, you know, and they're like, can we, can we, can we follow you? Can we follow you in the morning and see what your routine is? Oh, okay. Yeah. So Great. basically, you know, I set it up with the school. They set it up. Everyone's good to go. The district is loving it. The district is oh, like, oh my course, god, they're like, dude. they're like. You don't. They like have you understand the positive attitude. Attitude you, you have. are. You just yeah. You're bringing us up. This mm -hmm. is this is great. This is great. So you know I, I you know I'm doing that and then I think it was like a couple days later, I got a call from Ellen's people. Ellen. Ellen. Shut up. Ellen's people. And I I, I kid you not. I swear to God. Ellen's people called me, and I I did a um I did a and basically. 
I talked to them and then they ended up because I was at work and they said, hey, can we call you later on and do a Zoom meeting with you? Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up talking to them, doing Zoom meeting with them. And I'm I'm sitting there like I'm like, I, I didn't realize I, st- I said to them, I said, I didn't know this was going to spread this, get this big. I said I was just doing my job and I love my job as you know, and they're like, no, they like your you know, you're, you're, what you're doing is very, it, it's uplifting. What you're doing is above and beyond your job. Yeah. Let's be real. I, I what do. you're doing, standing <laughs> there, giving those ca- kids high fives, yeah. welcoming them into the school oh, yeah. is above and beyond what you are yeah. asked to actually do. And so just, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. That's just, great. I But, you know, I just, I didn't think much of it. And then one day there was, you know, bef- before they had scheduled a shadow me, Chronicle, it was a kid, a kid, you know, um, came to me, he goes, Kevin, he goes, can you give me a letter of recommendation for a college? I'm like, why would you, I said, why would you want my, from me? I'm like, for me, a custodian. He goes, he goes, the reason why I, you know, I want, I would love a re- letter of recommendation from you. He goes, because Kevin, he goes, you won't sit here and blow smoke up my ass. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> he says, you, you, he goes, he goes, since you've been, since I've known you, since you've been here, you've kept it honest with us. You haven't sugarcoated anything. You haven't lied to us. You've always been straightforward with us, you know, and he goes, you're, he goes, you're the person that I look up, look up to and respect. He goes, you're a custodian. He goes, but we don't look at you as that. We look at you as more than that. Wow. Yeah. And that's that, awesome. That blew me away. I'm like, I went and told my wife, I'm like, she's like, really? I said, yeah, I, you know, he wants a letter of recommendation from me. And, you know, and I sure not, I, I did it, typed it up, you know, forwarded to him. And, um, but th- that it's like, it, it showed me that, you know, kids kids are kids i understand that they do stupid stuff yeah it's just it's 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 the nature of it's the way it is but if you can earn their respect and their trust and show them that you're not trying to bs them you're trying to keep it 100 with them at the same time letting them know hey if you do something wrong i'm gonna call you out for it yeah you know you know i I want you to take responsibility for what you're doing dude you you changed lives you know you know it's it, it 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 doesn't seem like that while you were doing yeah, it, yeah. but you you changed. Oh yeah, people, little little, little brains mm-hmm. that were doing something, and then you took that and yeah. you were like, no, go in this direction exactly. instead. Without saying go in this direction, exactly. all you did was bring positivity. The same thing you brought to us when we when we worked together yeah. at Walmart, singing, dancing, running around, giving high fives. <laughs> we were doing all that shit while we were working yeah. third shift, yeah, it was- cleaning <laughs> floors. <laughs> so exactly. like. Like to see you do that and to uh, uh, to see that basically you've never changed no. from what I've known no, this is and, and what I what a, what a, who the person I've worked with mm-hmm. um, is is fantastic. But you took all of that that you always do. It's yeah. just you. It's in you. Yeah. And you brought it to them mm-hmm. and you you changed people, man. Oh, that's just, amazing. And that's. I think that's so cool. People, I, I I find it to be so, uh, like, what's it's not eye opening. It's it's just it's not relief. It's uh, what am I looking for here? You 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 just you just you just change them, yeah, and I think that's great. Oh no, it's you know, and it's it's every year when you know the freshmen are coming in or the kids are coming in, and it's just I I haven't you know I I, I kept it one hundred with them. I haven't you know tried to fool anyone, and I t- you know this is me. This is what you get. You know, this I, this is who I am. And and like I said, every year kids come and they go, hey, you're that you you know, my brother went to school last year and he said, you you know, you're, you're the music guy. You do the music and everything. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and then like, really, I go, hey, type in my name. You'll see my you'll hear my and then when they come in and they go, oh, well, that was really you. And then I give them a sample size of me actually singing or rapping. They go, wow, it really is you. <laughs> You know, it just kind of blows their mind because they here I am. They're like, you're a custodian. You know, we all love you. We all respect you. But, you know, you, you add that extra flavor, whereas you can you, you actually you sing and you, you know, you're, you're doing music and you and you still you have kids. How do you fit all this in? And I go, it's just it's just, you know, you it's life. You it's figure life. it out. <laughs> exactly. You, like exactly. there's no book. <laughs> There's no book to this shit. No, you just serious. you just do it. I, I, I don't know how many times I've woken up and I'm like, oh, OK, I got to do. Uh, exactly I'm, I'm going to get all this done today, I hope. Exactly yeah, like, you, you just don't know. No. You, you just you figure it out as you go. Yeah, and life throws you curves. Oh, yeah. And 
puts roadblocks in your way mm -hmm. all the time. And it's like, I think a lot of the younger generation has lost that vision Ugh. because our generation has made it so easy for them not to see those obstacles. And when you take the obstacles and the bumps in the roads mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the chances to fall down mm -hmm. and hurt yourself, you don't learn to pick yourself no. back up. It's this generation. It's the enabling generation. There's a, no accountability generation. And I and I see it and I go, I go, you know, you, you, you guys, I tell them, I go, you guys really don't have a lot to worry about. You guys don't really have a lot to your life compared to when I was a kid is, is, is easy. Yeah. You know, your life compared to when I was a kid, you know, you just gotta, the point is I understand you're going to do stupid stuff because that's, that's what kids do. But at the same time, take responsibility for your actions. Don't try to deny, deny, deny and say, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do this or this didn't happen when it did happen. Just own up to it. Take responsibility. Also at the same time, do, do the right thing. And I, I agree with you a hundred percent. But when I was when I was a oh, teenager, yeah. no, no, kid, I, I did not do no, that. And no. it boy, oh boy, did it ever bite me in the ass! <laughs> oh my god! It, but it traveled yeah. with me. Like I took that what I was doing, mm -hmm. and I brought it all the way up into my thirties. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so all it did was constantly keep me in trouble, mm -hmm. in and out of jail, yeah. you know, all kinds of wonderful things. Yeah. So if that's the path that you want to go on, then keep doing <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. Because that's the only place it leads. Well, it's, it's it's all life lessons. Yeah, you know? it's and life it's lessons. Just, you know, and it's just, and I, I understand that, like, some kids I talk to, and I'm like, you know, is they'll tell me what's going on, at, you know, situations that are going on. Um, because like I, like I said, being at that school for so long, the kids, sometimes they just want to come up to me and talk to me and tell me how things are going. And I go, you know, or what I'll, yeah, what I'll do is some kids I'll say, Hey, how's it going? You know, what's going on? How are your grades? Yeah. I'll ask them, how are your grades? And they go, uh, oh, it's C's and D's. And I go, really? I go, so, you know, what do you think you should do to, to get that up? And they go, well, I could, I said, Hey, that you got, you, that's what you got to do. Yeah. You know? Or they'll just say, you know, yeah, I was something happened at home, and I'm and I, I just listen. That's all you do is listen. Don't try to. I learned that listen. Don't try to give advice because you know what? That's not what they're looking for. They're looking. For they're looking for to somebody look, to, to listen. listen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I can. I agree with that. that. They're looking for someone to listen. And I tell them. I go. You know. If you ever need to talk, I'm here. I, you know. And I tell them. I said. I'm not. You know. You need to talk to me about anything. I'm here. I'll sit here and listen. And, and I said, that's that's kind of where we're at. You know, I'm not going to try to give you, you know, advice because my advice not be might not be the best advice. Mm -hmm. I can try to guide you and give you my opinion on how I would handle the situation or how I would go about it. But I'm not I'm not going to try to give you advice. That's really the best yeah. way to deal with yeah. any of this, yeah. situ any of these yeah. situations or anything oh, yeah. is, is that. You, even even this, where I talk about what happened in my life, mm -hmm. 